Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Edgewater Waterford Baptist Circuit online service. Welcome to everyone tuned in. Special welcome to our first-time viewers. In today's service, Holy Communion will be observed. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our service is about to begin. Please join us and have a blessed time in the Lord. Children of God, welcome. Welcome to this place of love and grace. Welcome to this place of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be part of this beloved community. God invites all of us to share the good news. We are welcomed just as we are. We are loved just as we are. In gratitude for all of this, let us worship God. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Morning. Welcome to this morning's worship service. A special, a special welcome to those worshiping online. We pray that at, to, at the end of today's service, our hearts will be blessed. We now invite praise and worship team to lead us in the act of praise in worship. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? And let me hear you say hallelujah. hallelujah. All right. So we're going to be introducing a new song this morning. Um, the song um, says, I won't let a rock cry out for me. It's going to be a new song. Um, we're going to do it quite a number of times so you can get used to it. Um, but initially, in terms of where this scripture comes from, so you know, um, in the triumphant entry, when the people were singing Hosanna and higher praises to the Lord, and when the Pharisees and Sadducees came and they were saying to Jesus, you know, tell the people to be quiet, and he said, um, if, they, if they be quiet, then the rocks will cry out. And essentially, that's basically the emphasis of this song that we're crying out in praise and you know just giving God all the glory and all the praise it's it's been a time we're still going through it but despite of that we still serve God we still serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who is still worthy of our praise so it doesn't matter how you came in feeling this morning it doesn't matter that things are not going well God is still deserving of our praise amen all right you've done for me loosed all my shackles and set me free wrote me and gave me the victory i got a reason to reason to praise i can't do what my eyes have seen what seemed impossible i believe look at my life we got history i got a reason to reason to praise What you've done for me You saw my shackles and set me free Wrote me and gave me the victory I got a reason to reason to pray I can't ignore I can't ignore what my eyes have seen What seemed impossible I believe Look at my life we got history I got a reason to reason to pray I won't let her up Cry out for me I won't let her up, cry out for me. I won't let her up, cry out for me. Never let her up, cry out. Never let her up, cry out for me. So we're gonna go again. I can't deny, I can't deny what you've done. Loose all my shackles, loose all my shackles, and set me free. Victory. I got a reason to reason to 
Because this is the this is the song that we're focusing on this morning. Because we're all gonna learn it because we don't want rocks to cry out for us. Amen. So we're gonna go from the top. I can't deny, I can't deny what you've done for me. Loose all my shackles and set me free. Wrote me and gave me a victory. I got a reason.
Jesus, you deserve it. All the glory you deserve it. And all the honor you deserve it. You are King of Kings, you deserve it. You are Lord of Lords, you deserve it. to be praying this morning we are going to be crying out to God um, I have been very heartbroken since the start of this week I guess many of you have seen the pictures of those women who are parading naked on the streets in the name of carnival and Jamaica is a, a very sad place this morning and so this morning the Lord has ask me to ask you as people of God all of us we are going to cry out to him this morning but before we do so I'm going to ask the praise team to sing you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all For from you are all things, and to you are all things. Oh, you deserve the glory. Oh, you're worthy of it
for today. We want to thank you, Lord, for life. We want to thank you, Lord, for waking us up in our right minds this morning. Lord, we come to you this morning heartbroken, Lord. But Father God, we repent this morning on behalf of Father God, our sins against you. We have sinned against you in so many ways, Lord. But we just want to ask you for forgiveness, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness this morning. Make us anew. Renew our, you know, right minds this morning, Lord. And help us to put away the things, Lord, that displease you, Lord God. Just want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can come into your house to worship. Father God, we lift up your name this morning. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the glory. And you deserve all the praise. Father God, you are God and there's no one like you. God, we bring our island home, Jamaica, to you at this time. You see, the things that are happening, Lord, men have turned their backs on you, Lord. Men are glorifying into lewdness and nakedness, Jesus. We cry out this morning, have mercy upon Jamaica this morning, Lord. Jamaica is in trouble this morning, Lord. Jamaica is in trouble. Men have forgotten about you, Lord, and they are just looking to pleasures of this world, Lord God. Men have forgotten that they have a soul to save this morning. Lord Jesus, we, we pray for those who travel on the roads. There's so much carnage, there's so indiscipline on our roads this morning. Have mercy on our motorists. Have mercy on those who travel. Father God, we have to cover ourselves every morning before we leave our homes. We don't know what we are going into, Lord God. So we pray that you cover us each day as we go to work. Lord, we pray for our community and their leaders. Father God, they need leading. They need guidance to this morning. So we bring them to you, Lord. Open their hearts and speak to their hearts this morning, Lord. And help them to realize that they can do nothing without you. They need you. Without you, Father God, they are helpless. So, Father God, we pray for our leaders this morning. That they may come to you and look to you because their help comes from you. Father God, we pray for the homeless and the people on the streets. Father God, many of them have no other choice. Father God, and many of them are ill-treated, but Jesus, we come to you on behalf of them this morning, Lord. Have mercy, have mercy upon our street people. Provide for them, Lord. Provide food, provide somewhere for them, Lord God. Provide a way out, because for them, some of them, there's no way out. Jesus, have mercy. Father God, we pray for those who are battling cancer at this time. Father God, we never see cancer as a, as a death sentence. But Lord, with you, we know that God, you are the greatest physician and there's nothing that you cannot do. So those of us who are battling with cancer, we place our lives into your hand, Lord. Father God, and we pray that your will be done. Father God, we know, Father God, that you, your word, one word can heal us. So we pray for healing. We pray for emotional healing at this time. We pray for physical healing. We pray for spiritual healing this morning, Lord. And Father God, we pray for the, uh, the preacher for today, Lord, Brother Jordan, that you anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. And we pray that his words be, thus saith the Lord, speak to him, Lord, speak through him, Lord, and that some souls may be blessed and some heart might be touched and that someone today might surrender their lives to you. Father God, we thank you for this day and let your will be done in the rest of this service as we honor you and we glorify you and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. We now have the opening hymn.
to the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gates that all may go in praise the Lord praise the Lord let the earth hear its voice praise the Lord praise the Lord let the people rejoice oh come to the Father through Jesus and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the strength of my life of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh they stumbled and fell though an host should encamp against me my heart shall not fear though war should rise against me in this will I be confident one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, 
then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto thy enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait, Wait on, on the Lord, Lord be of good, good courage, and, and he, he shall strengthen thine heart. heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We now invite Deacon Claudette Emmons, the church's secretary, to bring the welcome and announcements. Good morning, church. And I say to you here in the sanctuary and to you online, we gather for worship on this wonderful Sunday morning. Let us give the Lord the highest praise this morning. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you deserve it. You deserve it, mighty God. This worship service is coming to you live from the Edgewater Baptist Church here in Portmore, St. Catherine, Jamaica. And we thank God for giving us the opportunity to come together for worship another Sunday morning. A warm and sincere welcome to visitors, members, friends, children. And this welcome comes to you on behalf of the Edgewater Waterford Circuit of Baptist Churches, where the host pastor is the Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint. Allow me, though, to extend special welcome to those persons who are worshiping with us for the very first time, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're online. But if you're here in the sanctuary, I ask you kindly to stand for acknowledgement. If you're worshiping with us for the very first time, could you kindly stand? Yes, I see someone in the back. Please keep standing. Usher will come to you. Welcome to you and the baby. So good to have you. So good to have you. The word of God will be preached today by one of our very own, one of our song birds, and the man who really loves the Lord. We pray for God's anointing on him as he brings us what God has laid on his heart. I ask you, please, to help me welcome warmly our preacher, Brother Carl Jordan. <laughs> welcome, sir. So good to have you preaching for us today. And I extend warm welcome to Sister Winsome, his wife, who is right here in the sanctuary. And I understand that there are family members online, so we welcome you too. Yes, yes. And then, leading our service is Sister Dorothy Rhoda Brown. Just want to extend warm welcome to you, Sister Rhoda Brown, woman of God. And warm welcome to your family as well. I know there are some right here in the sanctuary and some online. So welcome to you as well. I pray for God's empowerment of both preacher and leader today. Special welcome to our musicians, worship team, communications team, ushers, hospitality team, caregiver, caretakers, and security personnel. We do appreciate your continued enhancement of our worship to God by the use of your gifts and talents. We would like to acknowledge and extend special welcome to members of our fellowship who reside overseas and you're visiting with us at this time. Any such person here today, you reside overseas you, and you're just visiting us today? Okay. Oh, members of our church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And then for those members of the church who are away on vacation, and you're back, any such person? Okay. Visitors and friends who feel so led 
to surrender your lives to the Lord. You are being ex extended special welcome to meet in the room on my right, and as I always say, the door closest to me. And this is on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. Two deacons will be waiting to guide you. And then new members are being reminded to attend classes with Sister Juliet Addison on Sundays at 9 a.m. And this is held by the main door, uh, on by the benches uh, by the main door. As a church family, we continue to pray for our sick and homebound members, their families and caregivers. As best we can, let us keep connected and encourage our brothers and sisters along the way. If you are a sick and shut in member, or a friend and you're online, we are so very happy to have you worshiping with us today. Just to let you know that the memorial service for Mr. Keith Archer, husband of Sister Ethel Archer, will be held at the University Chapel, Mona, Kingston, on April 25 at 1.30 p.m. And then there will be the funeral service will be at Windsor, Rio Grande, Portland on April 28, 2024 at 11 a.m. Please take note of the following. Children's Church will be held today upstairs, for those who don't know, in the multipurpose room. Family Bible Hour is held on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. Today is Women's Federation meeting, Women's Fe and all women, all women are invited to attend. Also, today is Healing and Counseling Clinic, and remember, we can invite members of the community to access the services, and you meet over on the benches by the side to my left. All are invited to prayer and fasting service, which is held here this and every Wednesday between the hours of 10 a.m. and 12 noon. You will be blessed. And then, later on Wednesday, the Bible study series, the message of Malachi, continues, and that is also on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on the church's YouTube channel. Vessels of Praise and Hands of Worship present a training workshop entitled Music Movements and Ministry on Saturday, April 27, 2024, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. in the multipurpose room upstairs. Males and females, four years and up, who are interested in joining these ministries are invited to attend. At, at 10 a.m.
please visit the Edgewater Baptist website and bulletin for additional updates and notices. And then at this time, as is customary, it is my pleasure to take time out on behalf of the church family to acknowledge and to thank God for all couples celebrating wedding anniversary during the course of this week. Happy, happy wedding anniversary to you, and I pray that God will continue to bless your marriage. Do we have couples celebrating wedding anniversary today? Please stand. Did during the course of this week? If you're celebrating wedding anniversary during the course of this week, please stand. Okay. Well, if you are celebrating birthday during the course of this week, on behalf of the church family, I wish for you happy birthday and God's richest blessing. And if such person celebrating birthday during the course of this week, I ask you kindly to stand and let us sing you happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to all of who know. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to all of who know. Happy birthday. Thank you so much for listening, and may the Lord bless you richly as you go through this week. Do have a safe week. Thank you, Deacon Emmons. We invite the ushers to come forward. Please stand. Let us pray. Father God, as we come to you today with our gifts, Father God, we just want to thank you for your provision for us you have been good to us lord and at this time we want to return some of what you have blessed us with father god we pray that you continue to strengthen us give us the strength to go to work every day so that we can earn father god we pray for strength we pray for guidance we pray for protection we pray also for the persons who collect week after week we thank you lord for their courage for everything that they do and father god and we pray for those who will use the funds collected may it be used for the furtherance of your kingdom in jesus name we pray amen if you wish to pay your tithes and offering by direct deposit for the edgewater baptist church ncb savings account number 364-548-516 and for the Waterford Baptist Church, NCB current account number 361-437-241. For both churches, it's at the Portmore branch. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Give, and it will come back to you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. You give, give to the Lord. Help me out Here is your opportunity to connect with someone who will listen, pray, and give guidance. It's the Ministry of Counseling and Prayer of the Edgewater Baptist Church. Please call 876-220-6474 or 876-332-7956. Weekdays between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Please talk to someone if you're finding it particularly challenging to cope during this period of crisis. Someone is waiting for your call. Please reach out today, 876-220-6474 or 
332-7956. It's the telephone counseling and prayer ministry of the Edgewater Baptist Church. A reminder that somebody cares. Endorsed by Love 101. When I come to the end of myself, Father, carry me. Self-examining, thought-provoking, based on the prophetic book of the Bible, the message of mankind is complex and controversial. Divine election, divine providence, blessing and cursing, divorce, tithing, the day of the Lord, and much more. The, the message, message of Malachi. Join the Reverend Dr. Dan and Tassan this and every Wednesday night at 7.30 for the Bible study series entitled The, the Message of Malachi on our YouTube page at Edgewater Baptist Church. Vessels of Praise and Hands of Worship presents Music, Music Movement, Movement and Ministry. Ministry. A training workshop Saturday, April 27, 2024, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Edgewater Baptist Church Multipurpose Room. Come out in your numbers, males, females, four years and upwards if you are interested in being a part of these dynamic ministries. Music, Music Movement and, and Ministry. Ministry. Come prepared in your black leotard and black long tights. Don't have these? No, no problem. problem. Just come modestly dressed in full black. No jeans allowed. Register no later than Sunday, April 21, 2024 at EBC Vessels of Praise at gmail.com. Music, movements, and ministries. A blessed and fulfilling day awaits you. Don't, don't you miss, you miss it. it. The Healing and Counseling Ministries Clinic will be held on the second Sunday of each month, immediately following the morning worship service. The usual blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar testing services will be offered. A doctor will also be available to offer wellness services. It's best to be in the know. Invite your friends and community members. That's the Healing and Counseling Ministries Clinic every second Sunday, immediately after the morning worship service. Ever hear earthquake call and say, Hello, Miss Lee. Yes, it's me, earthquake. I come in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced. And when it comes, it shake all sense and sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside, and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shaking starts, you know it's earthquake. Make a quick move to a safe place. Don't run to the doorway or any exit. Steers might break up or full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and poof, power gone, and you're stuck in that box without ear. Take cover under a strong table or a bed or crouch against an inside wall or in a corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH, drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls and doors in an earthquake, bad news. Take for yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, nobody run outside and ask, you feel it, you feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Drop, cover, hold on. We'll now have a theme song for children's church. Children, zero to 12 years old. It's now your time for children's church. With a capital P, I am a great big bundle of potentiality. Oh, yes, and I'm learning, learning to hear God's voice, and I'm trying, trying to make the right choice. I am a promise to be anything God wants me to be. You are a promise. You're a possibility. You are a promise, promise with a capital P. You are a great big bundle of potentiality. Oh yes, and you are learning, learning to hear God's voice, and you're trying, trying to make the right choice. You are a promise to be anything God wants you to be. In a 
short while, Brother Jordan will come to us with the word of God. But before he comes, I invite sisters Claudia Thorpe and Marlene Forrester to give us a special item. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. My name is Ellie. My name is Ellie. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up till I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will.
my brothers and sisters in Christ. Could you give them another round of applause? For a moment there, I thought it was Teacher's Day. Because um, Sister Roden is leading, I am preaching, and I see two teachers doing a special item. And um, that little child, a little child shall lead them home. And um, that's one of my favorite songs. For I thought um, Sister Marlene would sing the song in Patwa, but she disappointed me. <laughs> um, just like to thank those who have assisted in, the, in this service from the security at the gate, a very lovely young lady. She always parked me every morning when I come here. Um, she always has a smile on her face. I don't remember her name right now. This morning I was not going to park in the spot where the um, preacher parks. And she said, why are you not going to park there? So I said, I'm a humble little servant. I don't want to park there. She said, you're going to park there this morning. <laughs> I said, how do you know that I am preaching? She said, it's on the program. <laughs> so she directed me. I couldn't drive around that side because she blocked me and directed me to the spot, and I appreciate that. Well, give her a round of applause. And she made sure that I parked straight because I'm having a little eye problem. So I needed that guidance. Then also to Deacon Charit and Deacon Blake who greeted me right there with prayers and well, wish well wishes and encouragement. Also the musicians, the praise team, my God, I don't have to preach. What a lovely ministry in praise this morning. Give them a round of applause. And last night I came here for choir practice with Greater Portmore class. And the security, they told me I can't walk there because they clean out the church. And they don't want anybody to walk and mess it up for today. So the cleaners who are always keeping the church clean, big them up too. And the ushers, week after week, month after month, year after year, they are always here with us. And um, there's this gift of God that is called the gift of helps. And um, some of us, we, we kind of slight that one when we want to talk in tongues and we want to, what's the other one, preach and discernment and all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and we don't remember the gift of helps. My topic today was going to be about the gift of helps, but I changed it. And, and if I have omitted anybody, my apologies, because this always happens. You forget somebody and then bring about that. I never mentioned them, but you are in my heart. I just don't remember right now. Okay? Just like to acknowledge everyone now in the sanctuary here and those who are online, those who are in the virtual space. And you know that I'm going to talk about my aunt in Long Island and Natalie in Florida and um, I know the artists might be watching and others, Brother Brown and all those who are watching online. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And if Deacon Anderson wasn't here, I would be so vexed with him. You know, the story is told, not my experience, of a father who was spending all this money well, I shouldn't tell you. Should I tell you? Okay, yes. All this money he was spending on his child, on his son, and he was bragging about how his son, right, and his son is going to pass. That time it was common entrance. So young people don't know about common entrance. They know about Pep, and maybe GSAT. But common entrance, and one day he went to school, and he was so proud of his son and he came back home and he was telling his friends about his son and how his son is doing well and 
what his son is going to do. And then he called the boy and he said, spell banana. And the boy looked at him with a blank look. And he said, come on, smell, spell banana. Hear the boy now. The ripe one or the green one, daddy. <laughs> So all his hopes were dashed. Because the boy thinks a green banana spelled different from ripe banana. And that is my topic for today. Hope. But before I go into my topic, I would just like the communication team to put up my scripture readings for today, which comes from Job chapter 8, 11 to 14, and in the New Testament, 1 Timothy 1, verse 1. Could we stand for the reading, please? My apologies. I'm not able to see that. I'm having an eye problem. So I'm going to ask us to read it together. All right? Here begin it. Can the flag grow without water whilst it is yet in its greenness and not cut down, it's withered before any other herb. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish, whose hope shall be cut off and whose strength trust drivers the web. First, so, ready? First Timothy 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Thank you very much. You may be seated. And so we go to God in prayer. Most righteous, eternal, Father, the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord Jesus Christ, sovereign God, once again we come in your presence, Lord, honoring you, magnifying you, glorifying you, and praising you. Father God, as I come to deliver a message to those who are in my hearing, Father God, I, I just ask that you give me the spirit of confidence. For God, you know what is happening to me right now on my knees and my heart. And so God, I know that if you are in my vessel, then I can smile at the storm. Father God, may whatever I have to say today, God, be enlightening to someone in my hearing. May it bring words of comfort, words of assurance. For Lord, we know that iron sharpeneth iron. And we might know the scriptures and we might know the word, but when you hear it from a different perspective, Lord, you bring a, a, a different light is shed. And so God, take full control right now so that whatever may come from my mouth we, we would have been said, Thus saith the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you are without God, then you are also without hope. More and more people all over Jamaica and the world have become hopeless. Now, Polls worldwide, when done, have shown that people always believe that their country or their lives going in the wrong direction. And therefore, hopelessness takes over. What are some of the reasons that brings hopelessness to people? People put their trust in a variety of things. Some trust put their hope in friends. 
Some put their hope in family members. Some put their hope in politicians. We have just gone to a recent local government election the other day, and people were jumping up and believe that their favorite politician is their only hope. Several things people put their hope in. They put their hope in the medical doctor because the doctor is going to cure them. They put their hope in the financial institutions because they're going to be rich. So many things, too numerous to mention right now, the things that people put their hope in. I am here to tell you this morning, wrong move. You are putting your hope in the wrong things and in the wrong persons. Our only hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That is why the gospel is a message of hope in Jesus, who is our only hope. If we examine our understanding of hope, it is a desire or a feel of what we want to happen. Most people, when they talk about hope, they desire this, or they feel that. But many of us live in hope and we die in constant spring. I'm going to look at three different ways of how hope can be looked at. And I first look at wishful hope. Wishful hope. You have an exam, and you don't study for the exam, but you wish that you're going to pass it. Don't it? Huh? You are late for work or for a job interview or even for an exam, you're late. And you say, boy, you hope say, traffic not up on the road. Hmm? You wish the road smooth, don't it? Wishful thinking. More than likely, that's not going to happen. You wish that you're going to win cash pot. And even some Christian people, they buy cash pot. I'm telling you that. I know them. I know some of them. And those who live in America want to win the Powerball. The other day I heard, I was listening to the news, and my God, the amount of millions that Powerball is. I know that a lot of people wish that they, go, they could win that Powerball. Let me tell you something. You have a, a more chance, there's more chance of you being struck by lightning than winning that lotto or that Powerball. I'm telling you that. There's more chance that a car will hit you down out there so, while you're crossing the road than you win, winning that um, lotto. So that's wishful thinking. That's wishful hope. There's another hope that is called expectant hope. It's a little bit more than um, wishful thinking. And so you invest. Sister Toussaint invests. $10 million in NCBR, Baritar. Can't even remember all of the investment, JMMB or something. What is she expecting? She's expecting that she will get a good return on, on her investment. Hmm. You're expecting that. But will it be a reality? Is it a certain thing? No, you don't know. Because sometimes banks crash. And sometimes, <laughs> the other day, they went into my account in NCB and they enjoyed themselves shopping online at a place called Sheen. <laughs> I never hear about Sheen in my life yet until that time. And I hear that is a young people thing. And thank God, when they reach about $80,000, the bank realized it and um, shut down the account. Poor me, I was abroad at the time. 
Me want to shop with my card now abroad and can't buy nothing. A good thing, I have little dollars in my pocket too. I came home and I went and I cleared it up. Changed my number and all those things. About two weeks after, Radam. They were in it again. But they were detected early. They never reached $20,000. So put in your trust in the banks and so on. You are expecting that, right? You spend, again I come back to spending all of your money. When you could have been buying clothes and pretty car and this and that. You spend it on your children, don't. Because you want your children to get a good education. And you want your children to pass how many keep and how many this and university and that and that and that, right? But, um, and because you are investing in your children. And some of us, if we speak the truth and shame the devil, we are expecting that when our children succeed, they will dribble down something to us in our later years, don't it? Yeah. Talk the truth, don't hide the truth. But nowadays, let me tell you something. In Augusta, the children are still depending on you who can afford it to help them out. Because things out there are kind of rough, right? Even me, every time I go to my mother's yard, I read the cupboard the same way. Because if I don't read it, she go wonder if I'm vexed with her. Or what, I, I, if it's even a tin of corned beef, I always take. Because I don't want her to feel anyway. I, can, I don't have to do it, but I, it's habit. I win some love to take one of those juice. What name? One of them orange colored juice. Uh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, it's too sweet for me, so I, I don't normally drink any of it. And she will take one of the Doritos and so on. So we still read it, right? Now, you are expecting, and those things might not happen. You are expecting to get a good husband, eh? Are you expecting to get a good wife? No, so. Or, <clears throat> I want a good car. You're expecting. And so you put in the work and you put in the whatever it is. Expecting to get a good return. But is it guaranteed? Is it certain? All those things that you are expecting. Hmm? The weatherman said, boy, rain have a fall. You're expecting the rain, don't. When you take a stop, no rain. The other hope, I, I did the wishful thinking and I did the expectation. The other one is certain hope. When something is certain, no if, no but, or no maybes it is going to happen will the sun shine tomorrow do you know that you don't know but you expect it don't it certain hope is a guarantee think of the definition of faith faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. You heard the word hope. Therefore, our hope must be anchored in Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because faith and hope twin in them. Well, it's a triplet. Faith, hope, and charity, love. Right? Those are the three words in Corinthians something, something, something. Now, all of us know the purpose of an anchor. And the anchor is to hold the ship firmly so that it don't drift all over the place. First time, They, 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 there's a song that says, And Christ is solid, rock I stand, right? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus and his. And you can remember that song. And Christ, the solid rock I stand, right? Now, the first time anchor, it used to be rock. It used to be a rock. And they will drill a hole in the rock. 
and they put the chain in it. Because they never have no iron to make no um, anchor right now. Now they have some, the bigger the ship is, the bigger the anchor must be. Therefore, in our lives, we have to be anchor, anchored to the Lord Jesus Christ. So that we don't drift all over the place. Now, temptation out there. No? The devil is like a roaring lion. And he's seeking souls to devour. So you have to put on brother Higgins the what? Armor of God. So we have to make sure just like how the ship is anchored. So that when the, when, um, the wind and water rages and the billows begin to roll. Brother Williams, you are the second person I ever heard singing in this church. Rochelle was the first one and you are the second one. I must say, Lord, I hope I can join this church. And you sang the song about when the wind and water rages and the billows begin to... The blessed rock of ages brings peace to my soul. Now when the, 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 the wind and move, the ship will not... It just may go around in a little circle, but it's not going to drift very far. Because the anchor is firm and deep. And the song about will you anchor all say anchored firm and deep in the Savior's love. So we have to find an anchor to anchor our soul. And our anchor is in the Lord Jesus Christ. This anchor, as I said, prevents us from drifting. And keep us near to God. The further you... Well, I'm, I don't reach that part. Yet. You, you, the, the, you need to be near to God. And God has made, in my research, over 7,000 promises. And he always keeps his promises. That is one thing about God. That... You can, it's like money, well, not money in the bank, that's not true. Money in the bank, you can lose it. But it's an expression. When people say money in the bank, it's an expression to tell you that it is safe, right? We know different, but it's just an expression. So when you anchor to Jesus Christ, you know that you, you're gone clear. Now, God cannot lie. And he has made us several promises. And when he makes a promise, he's going to keep it. He's going to keep it. Hope in the Bible speaks of confidence in God. Based on what he has done and what he will do. Now, as Christians in here and online and all over the world, we have examples of what God has done for others and what he has done for us and what he will do for you later on. When you look at what he has done for others, that is called vicarious experiences. And what he has done for you is an individual experience, a personal experience experience and I could stay here for two hours and tell you all the things that God has done for me personally and my family I know I was drifting away in life's perilous sea but God rescued me and he has anchored me firm and deep in his love I'm not saying temptation don't come I'm not saying that I'm perfect but I always try to stay close to God and his words have I kept close to my heart lest I sin you know, you know the Bible you know you are all Bible scholars real hope is not my wish nor expectations but on what God has said 
and that is his words. And there's, a, there's an expression that says, before one of my words return to me. Void, right? Something like that. I can't remember exactly what it says right now. My word shall not pass away. Anything God says, that is how it is. I saw it go. You can't deviate. People try to deviate from it and to interpret it in their ways. But it don't go like that. God's words are true. Hope is not psychological. Like why well, you wish and you feel and you expect and all them type of things. Hope is theological. That means it is spiritual. That's a real hope. The Bible is filled with verses of hope. You remember, um, you remember Abraham? And Abraham was 99, don't. And Sarah, some people say Sarah, or whatever it is, you know who I'm talking. Was 80. Now God had promised him children, don't, or a child. Now, it is biologically or medically impossible for a 99 year old man or an 80 year old woman to get pregnant, no sir? Hmm? But God had made the promise to him, don't. And it happened. God kept his promise because Abraham, Abraham put his hope. He never put him hope in medical field. He never put him hope in anything, but he put his hope in the, the true and living God, Jehovah. He put his trust in him. And at 99 year old, for Abraham, and 80 year old for Sarah, Sarah. They, they gave um, birth. <laughs> people of this, a man and a woman nowadays say we are pregnant. I'm not used to that. <laughs> I, I, I used to the woman being pregnant. But the man and the woman say we are expecting a baby, we're pregnant. Eh? That's it, how they talk nowadays. But I'll go as how they talk. They had a baby. What was the baby's name? You remember? Isaac. And um, Abraham is considered to be the what? Father of the nation. Father Abraham had many sons. And, and when we go to school, we sing it and left and right and right foot, left foot and all those things. So God kept his promise to Abraham. Some people say, you have about God, God makes 7,000 promises. What about the promises they want to keep it? Look here, man. God have eternity to keep them promised there. God can keep them promised there any time he wants. It's up to him. It's not up to us. Because his way is not our way. And our way is not his way. His time is not our time. He is sovereign. You can't tell him what to do. And some of us, like, as preacher, as pastor, preacher, as he's like, oh, come on, God. And tell him, say, bad up God, and tell him, say, you want this sign? No, man, him, him work on his time. I'll tell you something. Sometimes you, you're not supposed to get something at a particular time. Because you never know if you get that thing what will happen to you. God knows. He knows the future. And he holds the future. So he knows everything that will happen to you. So you, must, you want a car and you're going... Not the right time. You might get the car today and crash tomorrow. So it's not the right time. God has the right timing for you. So there is hope in God. Now, as I said, the Bible is filled with verses of hope. Time does not allow for me to mention all of them, nor to elaborate on them. But I'll just give you a few. Romans 8, 24 to 25. For we are saved by hope. And if those who are writing, if you're writing anything, you can finish, to finish reading it. Romans 5, 
Verse 2. We have a rejoicing hope. Colossians 1. Verse 27. We have a glorious hope. 1 Peter 3. Verse 15. We have a witnessing hope. Hebrews 6. Verse 19. We have a steadfast hope. And maybe this one kind of take the bacon or take the cream. Jesus himself in Luke 18 verse 1. He says, always pray and never faint. Faint can be, you, you can interchange the word faint with the word hope. So I can, I can say, always pray and never faint. And never faint, but always pray and always hope. Don't just pray, because some of us, you see, even, even the Lord's Prayer, sometimes we know it good, you know, we can recite it, and we know it verbatim. But we pray it, or we say it, but do we believe it? Because as Christians, sometimes I wonder, where is our faith? Because nobody loves to grumble and complain. Like us, I'm including myself in it. Let's anybody say, Maguani, I'm Guani, Guani, and take myself. You watch him then, Guani, Guani. Me complain to, and me grumble to. But then, after a while, you're going to catch up yourself and say, Where is your faith? Because if your hope is anchored firm and deep in Jesus Christ, then you know that you, even if you pray for 10 years or 15 years, don't give up. Do not give up. Amen. Continue to pray and hope. Not wish nor expect, but to hope. Do not, come, do not uh, mix up wishful thinking and expectations with hope. Now, some, we worry a lot. We, we have cancer. Or we have been diagnosed with some illness, diabetes or something. And we Lord Jesus, we're dead now. This is the end of the world now. Or you lose it, your, your money in the bank or something, some family member, something wrong. Your, your, your son or your daughter do something wrong. And you say, Jesus, this, what, this is the end. You don't have any hope. You're not anchored firm and deep in the Savior's love. Trust God. If God wants you to die from that ailment, no, no amount of worrying where you do can't change it. It's going to happen. And if God doesn't mean for you to die that way, it can't happen. It can not happen. God is in control. We seem to forget that. And sometimes we have a little problem, Tamara. And the first person we run to is your friend or your neighbor or somebody. When the first person you must run to is God. When we see God, we, we, I say we again, take God for a last resort. God is, ain't no last resort. God is the first resort. God is our first refuge. I will say of the Lord, He is my, my refuge. In Him will I trust. Some people trust in, and some in. But I will remember the name of the Lord. David said, Why has my soul cast down? There is hope in God. And there are so many songs and so many verses and so many things that tell you about hope. But our problem is that we are mixing up certain hope with other type of hopes. The further you are from God, the more hopeless you become. I'll say that again for emphasis. 
the further you are from God, the more hopeless you will become. And the nearer you are to God, the more hopeful you are. Let that one sink in. A nation that is without God has no hope. I, I think I said that early on. Look what is happening in the Middle East right now. We are now fearing that there is going to be a world war. Because this perpetual conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis and Iran and the Israelis seem like it's not going away. The other day, Israel bombed the, Ir the Iranian consulate in, in Syria. And last night, Iran bombed Israel. Now Israel threatened. Well, Israel, let me not say threatened. Israel says they are going to attack. They are not going to take that so. And if they attack, Iran not going to take it. And it continue, continue. And then America and Britain and France will be drawn in it. Because even last night, the Americans and the Britons... British were helping to shoot down the Iranian drones. So they got involved in the war. There's an underwar a long time, you know, but it just become open. But we are worrying. But I know God says, when this world is going to be destroyed, him going to do it. No man can do it. And he's not going to destroy it by a flood anymore. But by what? Brimstone and what? Fire. He's not going to allow any man to destroy his creation. So we are, once we have hope in him, we don't have to worry about no world war. Or even, well, we can worry about the world war, but it's not going to destroy mankind. Because only God can do that. Only God alone has the power to do that. They say, that if, you are bore, if you, you're drilling for oil and you have not struck oil in half an hour, stop boring. So I'm going to stop boring you now. <laughs> I'm going to stop boring you now. And I hope that um, what I've said may have touched somebody may have given somebody a little bit of reassurance, may have strengthened somebody's faith and somebody's hope in God. But I just want to, um, those who forget God, you see, they don't have any hope if you forget him. You can't forget God and expect that you're going to have hope. I mean, I have no hope in another mankind. Come, the, the heart of men are desperately and even your friend there was this there's this lady sorry I don't know if this is in the right place to talk it but I'm gonna talk it when my wife got redundant there was this person that she trusted and this person was building addition doing an addition and I'm not going to say whether it's a man or a woman I hope it don't slip and the person was doing an addition on the house. And she borrowed some money from Winsome. That was, that was in 2010. Not even a dollar has been paid back since. That person has now migrated. Long time that person migrated. And from that person leave Jamaica shores. Winsome has never heard from that person again. I see the person on Facebook. And sometimes the devil tempt me and say, you know you can't talk certain things on Facebook. <laughs> Winsome is not on Facebook. I'm glad she's not on it because she's more impulsive than I am. I am a more calmer person. No. Never used to be calm, but I'm a calmer person. No. And sometimes I see them pose up on Facebook and I go on and go on. And the devil start coming on my spirit and say, 
And, and then I said, no. Yeah, talk about the things. Who said that, Sandra? <laughs> but then I said, no. That's unbecoming of a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a new creature. Any man within, who is in Christ, a new creature. Whole things pass. So I just said, no, I'm not going to do it. It burned me, you know, I'm saying it. But when some had hope in that person, that the person had to pay back the money. And not even that, and at that time, $100,000 was money 2010. Not like no $100,000 Brother Williams blew in a half an hour. I'm just, I know it's not true, I'm just. <laughs> okay. 100,000 was money at that time. You could do things. You could pay down on a car. You could, you know, things that you could do. You could buy a fridge. A two, uh, uh, one of them big fridge there. You could buy a six burner stove. You could buy a, a nice reclining settee. No? I'm going to look for one way there. I just turn my back and come out of the place. And start work with me see him old fridge. I'm <laughs> anyway, just a lighter moment. Winsor, I heard Winsome on the phone encouraging a friend of hers last week. The friend was crying. She has a daughter, and the daughter can't hold on a job. And she'd go up on the job two weeks, three weeks, she walk off it. And she's crying and said she's hopeless, and so on and so on. But Winsome was telling her, no, she must not give up. She must trust God. And I heard Winsome telling her, I want more dinner this evening when I go. Because the pork, I want more of that pork chops that you, you seasoned up from last night. Trust God. I heard Winsom telling her that. So trust God and God will deliver. And God will help that young miss who has this problem. All of us have problems, you know. Our problems might be different. But we have problems. So I leave it with you now and I tell you that the closer you are to God, the more hope there is. So those now who want to go home and finish up the red, roost, red rice and rooster, and those who want to finish up the oxtail, anybody who do an oxtail see me later and offer me some in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm ahead of time. I'm glad for this thing, you know. So when I can't answer, I need them. I go, so. um, I would just like to have a song of response. I had asked somebody to... There is hope in King Jesus. Um, I don't remember. I don't know if the praise team... We're sensitized. The praise team, they are coming. And they will do the song, There is Hope. Please stand for me. When your burden's heavy Because you have strayed And it seems there's no mercy Or it's been delayed Just like the prodigal son You gotta rise, you gotta be bold So I return to my father I'll go back into his fall There is hope there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, there is hope in God, there is hope, there is hope in the Lord, there is hope in King Jesus, hope in God. In a world such as this, the love of many was cold. You wonder what is amiss And there's a fear of getting old But behind every 
every dark cloud there is a silver lining and at the end of the road there is hope that's why we sing there is hope there is hope in the lord there is hope in king jesus there is hope in god there is hope there is hope in the lord there is hope in king jesus hope in god there is hope there is hope in the lord there is hope in king jesus there is hope in god there is hope there is hope in the lord there is hope in king jesus hope in god there is hope there is hope in the lord there is hope in king jesus there is hope in god there is hope there is hope in the lord there is hope in king jesus hope in god there is hope in king jesus hope in god there is hope in king jesus hope in god thank you very much sister roden said i'm to go ahead because she doesn't want to um take away from what i said always a teacher typical teacher always letting the student take control i'm not going to do an altar call today um, for reasons that I will not specify right now. But I just ask that when you go home tonight, that you reflect on what I have said, and that be encouraged. Be hopeful and anchor your hope in the true and living God. Receive the benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all, now and forever. Amen. And may God continue to bless and keep you. We've come to the end of our worship service for today. If you desire prayer and counseling, you may call 876-220-6474 or 876-332-7956. Someone will be there to talk with you. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will join us again as we worship together. Please remember to pray for each other. There's power in prayer. Have a blessed week in the Lord.